Hey guys, so last month on my horse's Instagram account, we hit 10,000 followers after being consistent for about 18 months. And I thought I would share some of the things that I wish someone had told me a year and a half ago about being successful on social media, growing an audience, but also maintaining some semblance of mental health. My first bit of advice would be to do what is sustainable for you. There are a lot of really exceptional accounts on Instagram where people have clearly invested in photo shoots and costumes and props, and they've got uh, another camera person that's sort of filming them with their pet. And I think that's great, but that's not realistic for a lot of us. And so I would just pick the approach and the style that is something that you can continue to do long-term. I would prioritize having fun with your account. To me, there's no point in growing an audience if you're not having a good time doing it and if you hate the process. So definitely do what feels fun and enjoyable for you. And then I would also encourage you to take breaks. For me, breaks have made social media sustainable. And what I do is I just tell my followers, hey, I'm gonna be taking a break for a couple of weeks, I'm looking forward to having more content for you when I get back. I see a lot of times people are posting, oh, I'm so sorry that I haven't been present or that I haven't been posting. And personally, I don't really think that's necessary. I think if you need to take a break, take a break. It's not a big deal, people understand. And for me, it's been really important to be able to do that from time to time when life gets busy. I find that if I'm not enjoying posting, that it's probably time for me to take a break. I would also encourage you to have an experimental mindset with your account, and this kind of goes hand in hand with having fun and having it be a creative process. Uh, because when you are a smaller account, it's really your opportunity to experiment and try different things without a whole lot of risk. You're not gonna alienate a, a large audience because you're still kind of figuring things out. And I think a lot of times, I know when I was a smaller account, I was in a hurry to become a bigger account. I really wanted to get there. And I didn't appreciate the value of having the freedom to just try different things. You know, try reels, try stories, try posting at different times of the day, try carousels, try video, um, have a different voice with your posts and kind of figure out, you know, what your audience, audience responds to. But not just what your audience responds to, I think it's super important to prioritize what you actually like doing. Because again, if it's not sustainable, if it's not fun for you, if you don't like posting motivational quotes, for example, um, trying to force yourself into that persona is just gonna make the whole thing feel really fake and not fun. And so part of being experimental is kind of figuring out what you like to do and what you enjoy. I have found it incredibly useful to have a bigger why for my account than my metrics or my audience. Uh, something personal that's meaningful for me. So my bigger why started off being that I wanted to document my journey with my horse. Uh, Fame had gone into training 18 months ago and I really wanted to document that process. I find a lot of fulfillment and meaning in being able to look back at old pictures and remembering what my frame of mind was, what the challenges were at that point and being able to go, oh, you know, it's really helpful to compare where we were then versus where we are now and see that growth. So that was a big reason for me. Uh, connecting with other equestrians and other horse people was important for me, particularly draft people. There were not a lot of drum horses on Instagram when I started his account, and there still aren't a ton, but there's more now. And I've met some really cool uh, people, met people <laughs> through Instagram, and that's been interesting and useful also. I also started posting as a personal challenge for myself. I do feel like social media is kind of here to stay, but I'm also concerned about the impact that it has on our brains and my mental health and all that stuff. And so part of me posting regularly and growing his account was a challenge to myself to see, could I do it? Could I be you know, not so precious about my photos or my writing and just put stuff out consistently? And could I do it and still maintain my sanity? <laughs> I've also gotten a ton of fulfillment out of just making people smile and making people laugh. Uh, the last year with COVID has been really challenging for a lot of us. And for me personally, there's been a lot that's been going on as well. And I've really valued accounts that make me smile and bring joy to my life. And I love that I get to be a part of that for somebody else. Now, personally, I would not worry too much about the algorithm. I know a lot of social media experts push the algorithm, the algorithm. And uh, to me, that just kind of gets me into this frenzied state of worrying about something that I can't really control. So again, for me, it goes back to being sustainable and going, well, what can I control? I can control responding to my audience. I can control 
putting out positive content that I'm proud of, I can control experimenting with the composition of my photos or trying video or doing a reel or experimenting with stories. Like that's stuff that I have impact and I have control over, not the algorithm. So I'm just gonna trust that the algorithm is gonna do its job of pushing out quality content. And my job as a creative person is to figure out my voice, to try different things, to entertain people, to have a good time, so that this is something that I can continue and want to keep doing for a long time. I know it's hard not to get preoccupied with numbers, and I've definitely had periods where I was watching the numbers climb and keeping track of, you know, taking screenshots every time I crossed another threshold. And I think that's great. I think you absolutely should celebrate your successes. I, I don't think caring about the numbers is necessarily a bad thing. I just find for myself that I can get really preoccupied with numbers pretty quickly and lose sight of the more important things, the more meaningful things uh, with connecting with people, with being creative, with discovering new things about myself. And so I would encourage you if you're a, a similar type of person that whatever you need to do to kind of hold the numbers lightly, do that so that you can continue to have a positive relationship to sort of the online social media space. One thing that I think people that have animal Instagram accounts deal with that is different from people that are doing maybe more personal or other types of accounts is that you've got a living creature involved in the equation. And so there have definitely been times where I've noticed that fame um, sees me coming with a camera and turns his head away and it has actually impacted the connection that I experience with him in real time. And so I've gotten a lot more mindful and a lot more um, selective about the times that I am pulling out my camera so that I'm prioritizing my relationship with him, right? There's no point in a social media account if it compromises our connection. And so you may find that happens with your pet as well. And if that's the case, you know, scale back, take a break, make sure you're spending intentional time where you are present with your pet because there's that extra um, component to it that's different from just putting yourself on camera that I think is really important to pay attention to. So let's talk about critics and trolls because I definitely had some anxiety about dealing with less than savory people on the internet when it came to social media. And there are a couple of things that I have found to be extremely helpful for me. The first one is a blog post article by a man named Tim Ferriss. He is a very famous podcaster, and I will link the article to that down in the description so that you can read it. And he talks about being famous and a lot of the pitfalls with being famous. And one of the things that he talks about is that when your audience gets to a certain size, inevitably, just because of statistics, you will deal with people that aren't mentally stable, people who are harsh or critical. It is just part of the game. So I would say, you know, if you have anxiety about that, try to view it as just a mark of having reached a certain size, that it is something that will happen. It has nothing to do with whether you're a good person or if you're posting good content. It is just a statistical reality. And so recognizing that and separating that reality from my content and what I was doing online was really helpful for me. The other thing that I have found to be extremely helpful in dealing with critics and trolls is turning it around and recognizing that what they say has more to say about them than it has to say about me and my content. When someone posts something negative or harsh or critical, to me, they are screaming something out about themselves and about their psyche. And at this point, I feel like I've gotten much better at immediately seeing those types of comments. And rather than feeling hurt or thinking badly about, oh, did I do something wrong or, or did I post something um, that I shouldn't have? I immediately go, what is going on with this person that that is what they chose to comment to a complete stranger that they had no idea about? Like, to me, it's just a fascinating study of humanity and human psyches and human behavior. And I think if you can do that for yourself and look at those comments as being reflections of them rather than of you, it will really help you stay sane in dealing with those types of negative comments. At least it has for me. I find that to be sort of the saving grace for me in dealing with negativity online. So I do think it's really important to appreciate your audience. So I try to respond to every comment 
to go on to other people's accounts and like their stuff and comment on their posts and, and reciprocate the, uh, the goodwill. And I do genuinely try to connect with people. You know, I recognize that because it's social media, it's not gonna be the same as a real in-person friendship, right? There are differences to connecting with people online. But as much as possible, I do try to just emanate, you know, being my authentic self, you know, obviously maintaining a certain amount of, of privacy for my own safety and just my own well-being, but being real with people, being authentic with people, being warm, being friendly. I do think all of that really helps in creating uh, the type of community that you want to have online. And it's not really even so much about the size and growing, right? Our culture is so preoccupied with blowing up and getting big and having a large audience. And it's kind of like, well, what's the point of having all of that if the quality of your audience isn't there or if the process is not enjoyable for you? So I'm really trying to focus more on those types of things. Uh, having a community that I like, no matter what size it is. Having a good time being on social media, um, no matter how big the audience is or what the numbers are. I do think it's really important to make sure that I am creating my life outside of social media and growing my friendships offline. Uh, because for me, I think there's a lot of psychological safety in knowing that the world that exists for me online is not my only reality. And so I do really try to make sure I'm investing in my in-person friendships and making connections with people. You know, I mean, obviously with COVID, it's a little bit challenging, but trying to really foster and maintain and grow those relationships with the idea that if things quote unquote fell apart online in any capacity, that's not the end of my life. That's not the end of my social network. And just knowing that in the back of my mind, that that's a priority for me and that that's my reality is that there's the online life that I have, but then I also have a very rich in-person life, I think is an important thing as, um, as you continue to grow online to make sure that you're keeping things balanced that way. I also try to remind myself that social media is a constant moving target, that there will always be a certain amount of tension that I'm going to experience in terms of where I'm at and where I want to be. And knowing that the target is always moving, that the numbers that I could hit or want to hit are always going to change, really helps me step back and say, okay, well, knowing that I'm always going to have some goalpost out ahead of me, what can I do to just really enjoy myself and create something fun and meaningful and have a good time today? So if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I wish you the very best in growing your Instagram account. And don't forget to have fun.